In graph theory, graph coloring is a special case of graph labeling. It is an assignment of labels traditionally called colors to elements of a graph subject to certain constraints. In its simplest form, it is a way of coloring the vertices of a graph such that no two adjacent vertices share the same color, this is called a vertex coloring. Similarly, an edge coloring assigns a color to each edge so that no two adjacent edges share the same color, and a face coloring of a planar graph assigns a color to each face or region so that no two faces that share a boundary have the same color. Vertex coloring is the starting point of the subject, and other coloring problems can be transformed into a vertex version. For example, an edge coloring of a graph is just a vertex coloring of its line graph, and a face coloring of a plane graph is just a vertex coloring of its dual. However, non-vertex coloring problems are often stated and studied as is. That is partly for perspective, and partly because some problems are best studied in non-vertex form, as for instance is edge coloring. The convention of using colors originates from coloring the countries of a map, where each face is literally colored. This was generalized to coloring the faces of a graph embedded in the plane. By planar duality it became coloring the vertices, and in this form it generalizes to all graphs. In mathematical and computer representations, it is typical to use the first few positive or non-negative integers as the colors. In general, one can use any finite set as the color set. The nature of the coloring problem depends on the number of colors but not on what they are. Graph coloring enjoys many practical applications as well as theoretical challenges. Beside the classical types of problems, different limitations can also be set on the graph or on the way a color is assigned, or even on the color itself. It has even reached popularity with the general public in the form of the popular number puzzle Sudoku. Graph coloring is still a very active field of research. Note, many terms used in this article are defined in glossary of graph theory. History the first results about graph coloring deal almost exclusively with planar graphs in the form of the coloring of maps. While trying to color a map of the counties of England, Francis Guthrie postulated the four-color conjecture, noting that four colors were sufficient to color the map so that no regions sharing a common border received the same color. Guthrie's brother passed on the question to his mathematics teacher Augustus de Morgan at University College, who mentioned it in a letter to William Hamilton in 1852. Arthur Cayley raised the problem at a meeting of the London Mathematical Society in 1879. The same year, Alfred Kemp published a paper that claimed to establish the result, and for a decade the four-color problem was considered solved. For his accomplishment, Kemp was elected a Fellow of the Royal Society and later President of the London Mathematical Society. In 1890, he would pointed out that Kemp's argument was wrong. However, in that paper he proved the five-color theorem, saying that every planar map can be colored with no more than five colors. Using ideas of Kemp, in the following century, a vast amount of work in theories were developed to reduce the number of colors to four, until the four-color theorem was finally proved in 1976 by Kenneth Apple and Wolfgang Haken. The proof went back to the ideas of Heywood and Kemp and largely disregarded the intervening developments. The proof of the four-color theorem is also noteworthy for being the first major computer-aided proof. In 1912, George David Birkhoff introduced the chromatic polynomial to study the coloring problems, which was generalized to the Tut polynomial by Tut. Important structures in algebraic graph theory. Kemp had already drawn attention to the general, non-planar case in 1879, and many results on generalizations of planar graph coloring to surfaces of higher order followed in the early 20th century. In 1960, Claude Berge formulated another conjecture about graph coloring, the strong perfect graph conjecture, originally motivated by an information theoretic concept called the zero-error capacity of a graph introduced by Shannon.
The conjecture remained unresolved for 40 years, until it was established as the celebrated strong perfect graph theorem by Chudnovsky, Robertson, Seymour, and Thomas in 2002. Graph coloring has been studied as an algorithmic problem since the early 1970s. The chromatic number problem is one of CARP's 21 NP complete problems from 1972, and at approximately the same time various exponential time algorithms were developed based on backtracking and on the deletion contraction, recurrence of Zykov. One of the major applications of graph coloring, register allocation in compilers, was introduced in 1981. Definition and Terminology Vertex coloring when used without any qualification, a coloring of a graph is almost always a proper vertex coloring, namely a labeling of the graph's vertices with colors such that no two vertices sharing the same edge have the same color. Since a vertex with a loop could never be properly colored, it is understood that graphs in this context are loopless. The terminology of using colors for vertex labels goes back to map coloring. Labels like red and blue are only used when the number of colors is small, and normally it is understood that the labels are drawn from the integers 1, 2, 3. A coloring using at most k colors is called a k coloring. The smallest number of colors needed to color a graph G is called its chromatic number, and is often denoted chi. Sometimes gamma is used, since chi is also used to denote the Euler characteristic of a graph. A graph that can be assigned a k coloring is k colorable, and it is k chromatic if its chromatic number is exactly k. A subset of vertices assigned to the same color is called a color class. Every such class forms an independent set. Thus, a k coloring is the same as a partition of the vertex set into k independent sets. And the terms k partite and k colorable have the same meaning. Chromatic polynomial The chromatic polynomial counts the number of ways a graph can be colored using no more than a given number of colors. For example, using three colors, the graph in the image to the right can be colored in 12 ways. With only two colors, it cannot be colored at all. With four colors, it can be colored in 24 plus 4 12 equals 72 ways. Using all four colors, there are four equals 24 valid colorings, and for every choice of three of the four colors, there are 12 valid three colorings. So, for the graph in the example, a table of the number of valid colorings would start like this. The chromatic polynomial is a function p that counts the number of t colorings of g. As the name indicates, for a given g the function is indeed a polynomial in t. For the example graph p equals t2, and indeed p equals 72. The chromatic polynomial includes at least as much information about the colorability of g as does the chromatic number. Indeed, chi is the smallest positive integer that is not a root of the chromatic polynomial edge coloring and edge coloring of a graph is a proper coloring of the edges, meaning an assignment of colors to edges so that no vertex is incident to two edges of the same color. An edge coloring with k colors is called a k edge coloring and is equivalent to the problem of partitioning the edge set into k matchings. The smallest number of colors needed for an edge coloring of a graph G is the chromatic index, or edge chromatic number, chi. A tape coloring is a three-edge coloring of a cubic graph. The four-color theorem is equivalent to the assertion that every plane a cubic bridgeless graph admits a tape coloring. Total coloring Total coloring is a type of coloring on the vertices and edges of a graph. When used without any qualification, a total coloring is always assumed to be proper in the sense that no adjacent vertices, no adjacent edges, and no edge and its end vertices are assigned the same color. The total chromatic number chi of a graph G is the least number of colors needed in any total coloring of G. Unlabeled coloring An unlabeled coloring of a graph is an orbit of a coloring under the action of the automorphism group of the graph. If we interpret a coloring of a graph on vertices as a vector in, the action of an automorphism is a permutation of the coefficients of the coloring. 
There are analogues of the chromatic polynomials which count the number of unlabeled colorings of a graph from a given finite color set. Properties Bounce on the chromatic number assigning distinct colors to distinct vertices always yields a proper coloring. So the only graphs that can be one colored are edgeless graphs. A complete graph of n vertices requires colors. In an optimal coloring there must be at least one of the graphs m edges between every pair of color classes. So if G contains a clique of size k, then at least k colors are needed to color that clique. In other words, the chromatic number is at least the clique number. For interval graphs this bound is tight. The two colorable graphs are exactly the bipartite graphs, including trees and forests. By the four-color theorem, every planar graph can be four-colored. A greedy coloring shows that every graph can be colored with one more color than the maximum vertex degree. Complete graphs have an, and odd cycles have an, so for these graphs this bound is best possible. In all other cases, the bound can be slightly improved. Brooks' theorem states that Brooks' theorem, for a connected, simple graph G, unless G is a complete graph or an odd cycle, lower bounds on the chromatic number several lower bounds for the chromatic bounds have been discovered over the years. Hoffman's bound. Let be a real symmetric matrix such that whenever is not an edge in. Define, where are the largest and smallest eigenvalues of. Define, with as above. Then, vector chromatic number. Let be a positive semi-definite matrix such that whenever is an edge in. Define to be the least k for which such a matrix exists. Then, Lovis number, the Lovis number of the complementary graph, is also a lower bound on the chromatic number. Fractional chromatic number, the fractional chromatic number of a graph, is a lower bound on the chromatic number as well. These bounds are ordered as follows. Graphs with high chromatic number graphs with large cliques have a high chromatic number, but the opposite is not true. The Grotch graph is an example of a four-chromatic graph without a triangle, and the example can be generalized to the Mycielskians. Mycielski's theorem. There exist triangle-free graphs with arbitrarily high chromatic number. From Brooks's theorem, graphs with high chromatic number must have high maximum degree. Another local property that leads to high chromatic number is the presence of a large clique. But colorability is not an entirely local phenomenon. A graph with high girth looks locally like a tree, because all cycles are long, but its chromatic number need not be two. Theorem. There exist graphs of arbitrarily high girth and chromatic number. Bounds on the chromatic index and edge coloring of G is a vertex coloring of its line graph, and vice versa. Thus, there is a strong relationship between edge colorability and the graph's maximum degree. Since all edges incident to the same vertex need their own color, we have moreover, Koenig's theorem. If G is bipartite, in general, the relationship is even stronger than what Brooks's theorem gives for vertex coloring. Vising's theorem, a graph of maximal degree has edge chromatic number or other properties a graph has a k coloring if and only if it has an acyclic orientation for which the longest path has length at most k, this is the Galaiasaroi-Vitivar theorem. For planar graphs, vertex colorings are essentially dual to nowhere zero flows. About infinite graphs, much less is known. The following are two of the few results about infinite graph coloring. If all finite subgraphs of an infinite graph G are K colorable, then so is G, under the assumption of the axiom of choice. This is the de Bruijn Erdos theorem of de Bruijn and Erdos. If a graph admits a full n coloring for every n n0, it admits an infinite full coloring. Open problems the chromatic number of the plane, where two points are adjacent if they have unit distance, is unknown, although it is one of four, five, six, or seven. Other open problems concerning the chromatic number of graphs include the Hadwiger conjecture stating that every graph with chromatic number k has a complete graph on k vertices as a minor.
The Erdos Faber Lovis conjecture bounding the chromatic number of unions of complete graphs that have at exactly one vertex in common to each pair, and the Albertson conjecture that among k chromatic graphs the complete graphs are the ones with smallest crossing number. When Birkhoff and Lewis introduced the chromatic polynomial in their attack on the four color theorem, they conjectured that for planar graphs G, the polynomial has no zeros in the region, although it is known that such a chromatic polynomial has no zeros in the region and that their conjecture is still unresolved.